Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Trey and today we'll be talking about 10 settings that can instantly make you a better player. Changing settings can be a bit uncomfortable at first, but trust me, it is absolutely worth it to get used to them. So don't waste time. As soon as we're done here, hop into Practice Tool and try these out. We'll start things out in the hotkey section, leading with what I would argue is the most important setting that we'll talk about in this whole video, Target Champions Only. You'll find it towards the bottom of Abilities and Summoner Spells. As the name implies, when you use this, you will only be able to click on champions with auto attacks and targeted abilities. Skill shots and area targeted effects will still be freely cast wherever. The time you'll use it most is when trading in the middle of the lane. You know those times when you're fighting an opponent and misclick on a minion? If it's just a single auto, it's bad enough, but what if it's something even more crucial to winning a fight, like Leona's or Annie's stun? Then there are the times when you go for turret dives. We've definitely all seen it. One guy sits right under the turret and lives with 1 HP because his opponents hit the turret instead of him. Maybe you've been the one who gets away, or worse, maybe you've been the one left embarrassed after failing. With this setting on, you'll be able to click on any pesky little opponents behind the turrets, no matter how small their hitbox is. One last reason to get used to using this is the ability to get behind camps in the jungle. This may sound useless, but there are some niche applications. For example, as Fiddle 6, you may want to get behind their raptors to pull off an ult mid lane. Instead of finding that perfect spot to click on the ground to avoid autoing the raptors, you can use this to just immediately move to the spot you want and not worry about getting held up on something silly. When you set this, I also highly suggest going to the game settings and turning on Treat Target Champions Only as a toggle, so you can switch it on and off as needed without having to hold it down the whole time in a fight. All the rest of the settings we'll be going over are going to be great ways to improve your gameplay. The next thing we'll be looking at is Quick Casting. When Quick Cast is turned off, when you go to cast a spell, a range indicator will pop up that shows how far your spell reaches, and in some cases, the area it affects. You'll then need to left-click to use the spell, either in the direction you want to shoot it at, or on the opponent or ally you're targeting if it's just a targeted spell. With Quick Cast on, you remove the need for that left-click input. It'll instead go off immediately at your cursor's location. This allows for much quicker spell use. While nice on everyone in general, it's borderline mandatory on certain champs. Take Cassiopeia, for example. You can't really spam her E as quick as you need to if you're constantly having to left-click with each cast. It also matters a ton on champs that need to combo super fast, like LeBlanc. There is sort of an in-between option. Under Quick Cast, you can enable Replace Quick Cast with Quick Cast with Indicator in the Quick Bind UI. This makes it so that whenever you press a spell, you'll get that indicator from before, but instead of needing to left-click, the spell will cast when you release the key it's bound to. I personally don't like this, but it can be useful if you're not 100% comfortable with the ranges on your abilities. A really simple yet impactful setting that not nearly enough people use is Attack Move Click, found in the Player Movement section of Hotkeys. That click part is really important. If you just bind Attack Move, say to the A key, you'll have to press A, then left click on the ground. With Attack Move Click, that left click is included, so you simply need to press the hotkey to give the command. Attack moving means you'll attack the first thing that gets in the range of your champion, or the closest enemy to the cursor if you choose to enable that under the game settings. This is useful for face checking bushes, or whenever you run up and down the river for a rotation so you'll clear wards on the way, or so you don't miss out autoing a champion that you come across in your rotation whenever your camera is elsewhere. If you have quick hands, this is also a really useful hotkey to have to help you with orb walking. We'll lump these last hotkey settings in as one entry. The first is using the S key. This fully stops your champ, halting both movement and, importantly, auto attacks. You may think this is sort of pointless, but there are a lot of applications. For one, it can be used to dodge skill shots. Rather than just spam clicking back and forth to juke, implement this to add stutter stepping to your dodge patterns to throw opponents off even more. It can also be used between CSing to make sure you don't just sit there pounding the wave when you have a good freeze. But the most useful instance of using the S key is to avoid hitting an opponent under their turret. If you get rooted under turret, but not stun, you'll auto the closest target, and in the event that the one CC seeing you is someone like Leona or Maokai, there's a good chance that they are the ones you end up hitting, causing you to take turret aggro and likely die. Hitting the S key will avoid that entirely. The other hotkeys I really want you to start using if you don't already are the ones that level up your abilities. Being able to instantly rank up a spell when you level up can actually be really clutch in close fights during lane phase, especially if it's right whenever you're about to hit level 6. The default for this is control plus the key binding of the spell, but feel free to change it if you need to. Now that we've gone over the hotkey portion of our settings, we'll get on to the perception settings, things that have to do with video, in-game information, etc. 
But before that, I do just want to remind you that while all of our videos like this are great starting points for getting better at League, if you're really trying to hit new peaks, you should check out our coaches at ProGuides.com. Those guys are the real deal and can definitely help teach you a thing or two about League. All right, now let's get on to some more settings. One thing I highly recommend is making your map bigger. And by bigger, I mean as big as it goes. There's usually a lot going on on your screen when you're playing League. Dodge this, hit that, avoid this, move here. You're having to think about all of this constantly at all points in the game, starting at level 1 on to level 18. This can make it really hard to notice things on the minimap. Sure, if their jungler walks down river past three wards, I'm sure you'll see them. But what if they just barely get caught out for half a second? You may end up dying to a very easily avoided gank. By making your map as big as you can, you're more likely to see things like this. You can also shift the map to the left side if that works better for you. Just as with the map, a HUD size is something else you may want to mess around with. I don't think you need to max out the size here like you do with the map, but it can definitely help to make your HUD at least a bit bigger so that it's more visible in fights. Again, with so much going on, it's nice to be able to quickly glance and know just when your spells are coming back up. Along with adjusting the size, it's also a good idea to enable show spell costs. This shows how much a spell costs on the icon, so you don't need to hover the tooltip, allowing you to quickly calculate how much mana or energy you need for a combo. There's nothing worse than committing to an all-in, only to realize you're 10 mana short of a kill, and then you end up being the one to die for it. So far, every setting we've gone over has definitely been good, but this next one is such an OP hack that most pros even use it. You should really try using colorblind mode. This makes things a lot more distinct in fights. For example, look at the difference in Singe's poison with and without colorblind mode on. Without it, you can maybe understand how people don't realize they're standing in it during a hectic teamfight, but with colorblind mode on, there's no way you're missing this. And on the topic of being aware, we should definitely talk about using your camera the right way. For one, there may be three options for camera lock mode, but the only right one is fixed offset. Also, you should absolutely not be one of those people that plays unlocked all the time. Getting used to playing with an unlocked camera helps you look around more and increases awareness of what else is happening on the map. To take it even further, get used to using those F keys. F1, like spacebar, will always center the camera on you. F2 through F5 will rotate the camera to the rest of your teammates in the order they appear on the scoreboard from top to bottom. You've probably seen some streamers doing this, and they probably do it so fast you can't even really see what's happening. You don't need to be a 500 APM show off like them. Just take your time and see what's going on, then move on. Chat settings are also something that can help your game play out a lot. The obvious one people go to is muting everyone in the game, but I think that should actually be a last resort. If you get tilted that easily and you have no choice, I get it. But communication is key in League. That said, you can definitely shut off all chat if you want. It's pretty unnecessary. The main setting I want to talk about here is the show timestamps one. This mainly helps when it comes to timing summoner spells. Most people spam ping an enemy's summoners whenever they see them used to let allies know they're down. But when you have timestamps on, you have a pretty close to exact timer on when they'll be back up. Another setting that has to do with communication is using smart pings. This season, Riot expanded our smart pings to include eight different options as well as three extra ones just for communicating about vision. You can bind any of these individually to hotkeys or open up the smart ping wheels and select which one you want from the radial menu there. Personally, the only one I worry about having bound to its own key is retreat, so I can spam ping allies to get away from a dumb play. Everything else I just use from the radial menus. And that about wraps things up for our 10 settings that can instantly make you better at League. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guides and other videos like this one. And one last thing, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com if you're ready to level up your gameplay and really start climbing. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck out there on the Rift. Bye!